morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for the invitation to join you at today's uh, Directors Forum. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to start the conversation that will be very interesting. It's now more than nine months uh, since I was uh, here at the Directors Forum, and at that time I was my second week in office, in fact, seven days in, and uh, still getting my feet wet. I guess that's where I got my cold. The, um, but I, just so you know, I'm beyond the stage of giving it away, so uh, if you get one, it wasn't from me. The, much of what has taken place since late February uh, has involved, uh, well, the worst winter in recent PEI history, uh, provincial election, uh, a significant alignment and realignment of government departments, uh, significant uh, uh, realignment of uh, people's uh, duties and responsibilities, uh, two sittings of the legislature, including operating and capital budgets and 45 uh, bills adopted, and then action on a number of uh, policy fronts. And throughout that, I've been deeply impressed by uh, the work uh, that I've had a chance to see up close of our public servants and especially in circumstances that involve both change and, of course, challenges, and, and there's nothing new about that. And I certainly have a, a respect and appreciation for the, the diligent work and uh, the dedication that people in this room and throughout the public service bring to their jobs and to serving the public. When I spoke in March, I said that the Premier relies on a professional and dedicated public service, and I also said that everything we do is teamwork and that it's about serving the public and it's in that spirit today that I thank you for your support and contributions and address the subject uh, of, of open data. Of course, serving the public is a, a work in progress and uh, on that question of openness and transparency, we've been uh, committed uh, from the beginning to really approach it with a sense of uh, purpose and a commitment and, re and recognition that it's uh, a job that's that's never done. But it's those concepts of openness and engagement are vitally important to our government. And open data is about creating transparency and accountability, about increasing citizen engagement, about laying a foundation for innovation and encouraging economic and social opportunities. But before speaking to that in particular, I'd like to review some of what we've done on the broader question of openness and transparency since uh, coming to office. That includes uh, an expanded scope of conflict of interest requirements for senior officials, greater openness and accountability on travel and related expenses, a new whistleblower policy, uh, the appointment of Sean Sullivan Curley as uh, Commissioner of Ethics and Integrity, and most recently the unveiling of the Engage uh, PEI process uh, to encourage uh, greater citizen participation in government boards and agencies. And then the most recent development being the opening up of the business of the Legislative Assembly to uh, greater uh, transparency. And if I take the example uh, uh, of the Engage PEI process as uh, uh, one where we might think about, well, what is it to uh, go into the world of open data? Um, the first thing that that required us to do was to have an accurate inventory of how many uh, boards and agencies and uh, various uh, tribunals and bodies uh, where we have uh, positions to which citizens could be appointed. And so uh, we started out uh, with a, a number in the range of 70, uh, but as we got further into it, we realized that it might be more like 155. Um, and it, it's the discipline of asking yourself what you should you're going to share with the public uh, that brings a kind of uh, the, the first place where you, you get to that openness and transparency is in what you actually know yourself and uh, how uh, clear uh, we are about uh, how we define things uh, in, in the first place. And then uh, the further steps that are involved in actually letting the public know that we're interested 
in the first place and why they uh, might be interested or why they might feel that um, government is approaching things on different terms or with a different outlook or culture than they may generally assume uh, to be the case. I think that's really important about the, the whole open data development is that it really is a culture change in terms of how we view what information we have as government, how we collect and collate it and record it and then uh, make it accessible. So in short, open data is about opening the books, as John said, freely sharing information with the public. And there's a recent editorial in the Globe and Mail which says that openness should be the default position for government data, documents, or information. There's also a recent piece in the Globe uh, which is highly critical of British Columbia, which on the face of things is considered to be the province that has gone the furthest into uh, an open data commitment uh, for the way in which they've been um, skirting the traditional uh, FOIP uh, process. Uh, so it, it's to say uh, this is more than making a, a commitment on the face of things or in making a declaration uh, that we're going in a particular direction. It's to actually think through the hard steps of uh, what it is to, to know what you've got as data, how to gather it in the first place, how to make it available, and then how to, how to walk the talk, how to, to live that new culture of openness and transparency. From a technological point of view, it's easier than ever to gather and record data and to make that data widely available. And data collected by government in principle belongs to the people. And there's therefore an onus on government where it chooses or where it feels there's a, a need to treat uh, data as either secret or confidential. To There's an onus to justify that uh, against the presumptive position that it should be open and shared and belong to the people. And the issue here is, uh, is one of ultimately government that's accountable and responsible to the people that it serves and as we've said since coming to government and said repeatedly, it's about citizen engagement as a priority. And we, de we absolutely need to find further and better ways to engage uh, citizens, to be open and transparent, to obtain input and critical perspectives on our policies and decisions and actions as government, and to take advantage of new technologies that can be deployed for our benefit in terms of how we do things as government and for the benefit of the people. Ultimately, it's to listen and to work and to learn together. We had a forum on uh, uh, open government in, uh, in Summerside in February uh, of this year, and one of the people we invited uh, to come in uh, by Skype uh, was uh, one of the leading international experts on open data. And he gave a very clear example of uh, how uh, government data can be uh, shared uh, in a way that's beneficial uh, to people. So he gave the example of uh, a, a municipality in Los Angeles, uh, or not in Los Angeles, municipality in California, that uh, made public all of its information about public health inspections of restaurants. And they not only made the information available in terms of uh, linked to documents, but they presented it in a way that it was uh, accurate and up to date and that people would go, go there for information. And then in turn, there were uh, internet platforms and uh, the people who were developing apps to advise you on uh, which restaurants you might go to and so on, who, who took this information and used it uh, for their purposes. And what they found uh, in a kind of a before and after uh, comparison was that they had 17% uh, fewer visits to the emergency ward uh, as a result of foodborne illnesses. Uh, and for those of you who are in the health business or the Department of Finance, you'll realize that 17% fewer visits to the emergency ward adds up to something in terms of government's interest in sharing that information. Well, you also showed us in that, uh, in his presentation, all by Skype, was uh, a contrast between uh, a municipality in British Columbia 
that was using this, disposing the same information, but essentially with block text uh, paragraphs uh, uh, on an internet site. And uh, a municipality in uh, California that was using pie charts and bar graphs and various ways that people uh, could see very quickly what and interpret very quickly uh, the information that was being shared. And that's another key feature of the whole commitment to open data is not only to you know, put in a link to something or post a PDF document, uh, but to be thinking from the reader's perspective or the user's perspective how it can be made, made available in the most uh, beneficial way. And one of the things that we learned through that, uh, through that forum and other uh, following up and reading about this is that if you look around the world, it's really been the municipal governments that have uh, done the most to uh, innovate or to step forward into uh, the open data space. As John said in his introduction, uh, the federal government uh, has an open data uh, policy or strategy with its 10 principles and so on. But I think the, the federal privacy commissioner would say that uh, we've got a long way to go in terms of actually kind of implementing uh, an open data a culture. Uh, and across Canada, um, people would say that uh, British Columbia uh, has gone the furthest in this, and then you'll go across uh, to Newfoundland, which would uh, have, I think it's, they've got 34 data sets that are public. British Columbia has in the or on the order of a couple of thousand. In the case of Prince Edward Island, um, we're really looking at this as a, a new venture. But one of the things that I think is very, will be very useful in today's session and that will continue to be useful is to uh, share with each other uh, the amount of data that is already uh, being made public in a, in a usable format. So I think rather than kind of approaching this as if it's uh, some new uh, territory that we're uh, looking at putting our foot on, uh, it's to realize that the government has been in the business of uh, collecting and using data for generations, uh, and in some cases uh, has been innovative, uh, including here in this province, in making it available and sharing it with the public in a way that we intend to, uh, to learn from, from its use and in a way that will be beneficial to the constituencies and the communities uh, that we serve. In the case of our municipalities in Prince Edward Island, Summerside, uh, the city of Summerside, uh, has uh, most recently been the most uh, proactive about this under the leadership of uh, Mayor Bill Martin. And uh, we've been uh, directly challenging uh, the other municipalities to uh, move in this direction, to have uh, policies on uh, freedom of information and to explore uh, opportunities with their own in their own context and with their own communities uh, to uh, move further into the uh, open data space. We've, we've made the same challenge to the post-secondary institutions and I expect as uh, many of you will be aware, uh, PEI is uh, the one provincial jurisdiction in Canada that doesn't uh, subject the municipal governments and post-secondary institutions to the provisions of the FOIP uh, regime. And um, you know, many people have said uh, that that uh, should be done. Um, it's one of those things where, if you look at you know, the law reform world, if you're if you're the one uh, the one that's kind of the odd one out, then the obvious thing to do is to uh, sort of extend that application or extend that regime to uh, the municipalities and post-secondary institutions. What what we've said instead is uh, to invite, or more than invite, uh, the post-secondary institutions and municipalities to show us and to show their citizens or their users and their communities uh, that they can do uh, a more useful job of uh, sharing information and making it available through an open data approach, uh, in which case uh, they may not need to be subject to the FOIP world. And the, basically, the, the contrast is between, you know, FOIP belongs to uh, the technology of uh, the photocopier and the black marker 
uh, or the redactor, I call it, um, where and, and and it's more of a reactive approach. It's in response to uh, you know people who come in and, and make requests, whereas the open data world is very much uh, uh, of the world of uh, machine readable information that's openly shared and uh, made uh, available uh, in a way that's proactive as opposed to reactive um, and that is made to be uh, user friendly and I think that's really the key point uh, in where we are today uh, as a government is we uh, look at this and of course there'll be other speakers uh, later in the morning who will say more about the process by which uh, this will uh, unfold but I think it, I want to go back to a point I made at the beginning. Uh, every time we ask ourselves to disclose something or ask ourselves uh, what we know about something, we can't help but be smarter about it. It brings, it brings a certain discipline uh, that will undoubtedly mean uh, that, you, that you learn something. And I find that every day in my work, if I'm going to you know, stand up and say, well, we had a 19% reduction, or there's something that's different from the way it used to be, um, you have to be very precise and probing about what it is that you're actually saying and, and how people are going to interpret and use uh, that information. Uh, speaking of uh, you know, old and new technologies, um, I'm going to go later this morning and had a, a 90 minute interview with Teresa Wright, uh, that is sort of the kind of end of year interview. Uh, so uh, I expect that somewhere along the way there, uh, there'll be something that I'll encounter or that I'll be saying, where I'll be thinking, I wonder if I really know what I'm talking about. Uh, and somewhere in the course of 90 minutes, it's a good, there's a good chance that will happen. Uh, but that likely means that by tomorrow morning I'll be a little wiser about whatever, whatever that is. And I think that, that's sort of the nature of open data and that's one of the great benefits uh, that comes uh, with uh, moving toward, toward that culture. Um, the other thing that I'd say, uh, as I take a look at the clock at the back of the room and I'm mindful of the agenda that you have this morning, is that Yes, this is clearly about a culture change, about a way of thinking, not, not a way of thinking, but almost an ideology in terms of what we know or what we share uh, as government. And the other thing, which could be said at any director's forum or any end of year interview, and that is the greatest uh, challenge that any of us face, whatever our responsibilities are, is the passage of time. Uh, in fact, I'm wearing for my interview today this tie with the sun and the moon and the stars to kind of remind us that uh, we're soon to, to run the course of the 12 months, we're soon the solstice is coming and so on. Um, but we're going on into a new, new year uh, as government. Uh, and um, I don't say this directly in terms of electoral mandates, but uh, in terms of uh, the cycles when uh, things get done, uh, it's, It'll soon be uh, early next week, 10 months since I became Premier. Uh, some of the biggest things that we'll need to get done uh, should get done in the next 12 months. Uh, and one of them uh, that I hope uh, all of you will take to heart, and, and I know that's the case from your, your presence here today, is that we'll all uh, work together on what we can do about uh, a more open approach uh, to government and to uh, innovative ways that we can make the information that we have available and usable uh, by our citizens. And, and I think one of the most useful ways that we can do that and encourage each other um, is to share best practices and to be sure that uh, we uh, have an opportunity to, to learn from each other. I think if each of us kind of sat at an individual table here and said, what am I going to do next about open data? It's not a lonely task and, and likely a, a somewhat menacing one in terms of uh, you know, our traditional approach to uh, the communities that we work with. Um, but with that a commitment shared and uh, a, a, a 
a spirit of collaboration and learning from each other, I think we'll find that we can, we can achieve a lot more.